Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about the 17 caliber bullets. We're going to talk mostly about the 17 Hornet, but we are going to spend some time comparing that to the 17 Winchester Super Mag. So I've gone ahead and I've decided just to tear these bullets apart and let you guys see what's inside of them, what do the bullets themselves look like, um, how much gunpowder is in them, and then kind of take it from there. I've got the inertia bullet puller here. I've already got a uh, 17 Hornet torn apart. So I'm going to pause the camera for a moment. We're going to zoom in and um, take a closer look as I just pour the contents out into the uh, glass here. If you like today's video, hope once again that you'll remember to like. If you haven't subscribed yet, hope that we'll be able to get you to subscribe soon. Either way, I'm definitely looking forward to your comments. Thank you again. Okay, what we're looking at is a side-by-side -side comparison of the 17 Hornet 20 grain on my left and 25 grain on the right. It is a uh, ballistic tip Hornady Super Performance on the left, as you can see. And on the right, also by Hornady, this is their 25 grain hollow point. I wanted to go ahead and open these rounds up, so I used the uh, kinetic bullet puller here. You can see the uh, shell casing of a 17 Hornet still in there at the top. Haven't even opened this yet. Um, I did successfully, you can see the contents. I successfully opened it up. I've got the bullet and the uh, powder in there at the bottom. I went ahead and I used the Lyman, Lyman Brands Inertia, Magnum Inertia Bullet Puller. Uh, so I can tell you for sure it does work with the 17 Hornet. Uh, you will realize if you ever try to do this on your own that it takes a tremendous amount of swings with this hammer to get these rounds to open. Part of that is twofold. These are very lightweight bullets, especially the, uh, the 20 grain here. In a moment, I'll be opening up the 25 grain. Um, I started off swinging slow. After about my 20th swing, the swings got a little heavier and a little more intense. It took me 105 swings with the inertia bullet puller to get the contents out. So part of it is a, a very light bullet, and part of that is that the factory seals these up pretty good. So in a minute, we'll uh, let you know how many swings it takes to open up the uh, bullet on the right, the 25 grain. Okay, we've hopefully got a, a much tighter view for everybody there. This is the Inertia Bullet Puller by Lyman, once again. I'm just going to go ahead and unscrew the top. Set that on the table. Here you're going to see the uh, just the brass with a live primer on it for the 17 Hornet. So I'm going to go ahead and pour the contents into a glass of what we just now took out. The bullet is there. Pour that on the table. And there's the gunpowder itself from the round. Okay, well, I'm back, and I've just now opened up the 25 grain 17 Hornet. I'm going to go ahead and unscrew the cap here. Once again, here's your uh, empty shell casing, live primer on the back. We'll just set that down, pour the contents out here. There's our bullet, and there's the powder charge. Interestingly enough, it did take about 105 swings on this 20 grain here to pull that apart, and it only took about 19 swings with the hammer to uh, open up the uh, 25 grain. A lot of that is because with a, with a heavier bullet, they simply open up easier with your inertia bullet puller. And some of that is because I'm getting a little more practiced up with how much force to use on the, uh, the swinging of this bullet puller with these rounds. Okay, so what we're looking at now is the gunpowder that was recovered from the 20 grain 17 Hornet. I don't have a digital scale with me at this time to weigh this, but at least you can kind of just see it, you can just kind of eyeball it. This is the gunpowder recovered from the 25 grain. There's not a lot of difference visually um, the camera may not pick up everything, but if I had to guess, I would say that the 25 grain powder charge for that 25 grain bullet is probably just over 10 pound or 10 grains worth, maybe 10.1, 10.2, 10.3 grains. 
and this is probably around 10.8, 10.9 grains. Again, I don't have a digital scale to weigh it, but that's my best guesstimate for right now. Uh, here are the bullets that uh, themselves that have been recovered. On the left, we have the uh, 20 grain. This is the 25 grain. Here they are from the back. Notice they're pretty much the identical size. And I don't have a 25 grain to show to you, but in a moment I'm going to show you a picture of a 25 grain ballistic tip next to each of these so you can at least get a feel for the difference in length of bullet. And then here's both of those bullets next to just a standard uh, 22 long rifle cartridge just to give you a feel for the size of them. Here is uh, the 17 Hornet. This will give you a feel for how that bullet looks compared to the overall case length. And here is a um, 17 Winchester Super Mag. Now again, the 17 Winchester Super Mag and the 17 Hornet, when we're talking 20 grain, they do shoot the identical bullet. It's the identical bullet that's housed on top of each of these. Now when we're talking 25 grain, it's actually a different bullet that goes on top of the 17 Winchester Super Mag. It's more of a ballistic tip, and it looks like this. The 25 grain ballistic tip will have a little bit more length than the 20 and 25 grain, and therefore it has a more favorable ballistic coefficient. And we'll show you a picture of that right about now. Okay, well hopefully that picture of those uh, bullets helped to make a little better sense of the height difference. What you were just looking at from left to right was a 20 grain VMAX and then a 25 grain hollow point and then a 25 grain VMAX. Hopefully you were able to see the height difference. That 25 grain was a little bit taller than the other two and therefore had a little bit better coefficient. Again, that 25 grain VMAX is what sits on top of the 17 WSM. Out of all four bullets, if you're gonna go with a factory loaded round, that one will give you the best ballistic coefficient. So I figured no review is complete without a good cheat sheet. So over here on the left, we've got the 20 grain 17 Winchester Super Mag. It has a ballistic coefficient of 0.185. The 25 grain 17 Winchester Super Mag, ballistic coefficient 0.23. 20 grain 17 Hornet, 0.185 on the ballistic coefficient again. And on the 25 grain 17 Hornet, almost the identical ballistic coefficient, 0.187. Now on this cheat sheet here, I figured it'd be important for us to figure out what the powder charges actually are. Now on the, um, reading from left to right, on the 20 grain 17 Winchester Super Mag, that's loaded with nine and a half grains of powder. Again, you've got eight and a half grains of powder on the 17 WSM. Then you can start to see the increase in powder charges over in the uh, 25, over in the 20 and 25 grain 17 Hornet, eventually topping out at right around 11 grains of powder. And as far as those grains of powder are concerned, I figure how do those really compare? Well, first of all, if we look at the um, eight and a half grains of powder on that 25 grain Winchester Super Mag, that's actually 13.3% more than what you're gonna find in most 22 mags. And it's about 31% more than you're gonna find in most 17 HMRs. In terms of your 20 grain Winchester Super Mag, here you're gonna get about 11 and a half, maybe about 11%, 11.7% more than what's in your 25 grain 17 Winchester Super Mag. And then when you step up into the uh, Hornet round, you're gonna get anywhere between 10 and a half up to 15%, maybe 15 and a half percent more powder than what's in your 20 grain Winchester Super Mag. And then just to compare apples to apples, if you look at the 17 Hornet 25 grain, anywhere between 20 to 25% more powder than what's in your 25 grain 17 Winchester Super Mag. As far as the starting numbers are concerned on these cartridges, you've got 3,000 feet per second at the muzzle on your 20 grain 17 Winchester Super Mag. 
you go over here and compare that to the 17 Hornet 20 grain, you're looking at 3650 and 591 foot-pounds of energy, so a pretty good jump. And then on your 25 grain cartridges, you got 2600 foot-pounds of energy on your Winchester Super Mag. So 2600 foot-pounds, I'm sorry, 2600 feet per second rather, 375 foot-pounds compared to 3375 feet per second and 632 foot-pounds of energy, but that's at the muzzle. Here's where it kind of gets really interesting when you go all the way out here to 200 yards. At 200 yards, you'll notice that you have about 200 foot-pounds of energy on your 17 Winchester Super Mag if you're using the 25 grain bullet. That's going to be your better performer at a distance for sure. You compare that to your better performing 25 grain 17 Hornet, foot-pounds wise that is, 311 foot-pounds compared to 199. That's a 50%, more than 50% difference in downrange energy. And here's what else is really interesting. At 150 yards, the 25 grain 17 Hornet, look at those, look at that feet per second. Compare that to the feet per second at the muzzle of the uh, 17 Winchester Super Mag. It's basically the identical number. 375 foot-pounds there, 375 foot-pounds there. The only difference is, is that this cartridge is giving that to you at 150 yards down range rather than at the muzzle. Well, thanks again for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you all have had as much fun watching it as I've had making it. Uh, as a friendly reminder, don't use the kinetic bullet puller on rim fire ammo. Only use it on center fire ammo. Uh, again, thanks for your time today. We look forward to your comments. Thanks for liking, subscribing, sharing the video. Thanks again.